Hi guys, Electrostats here. Welcome to this new episode of Time to Improve. Unlike other rhythm games, Beat Saber doesn't have a concrete timing scoring system. However, timing is still very important. The three-dimensional aspect mixed with the accuracy scoring system just so happened to create a very unique mechanic that only exists in this game. For today's episode, we will see what is timing dependence, how it affects your accuracy, and what tool you can use to help lower your timing dependence. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Before I start explaining what timing dependence is, I highly recommend checking out DeadZix's video about the subject. His video is a very good summary of what we will see today, and it might help you better understand this episode. So what is it? Simply explained, timing dependence, or also known as TD, is a value that represents the amount of points that are dependent on the timing at which you hit the note. The calculation of timing dependence might be a little bit complicated to understand, so I'll try my best to explain it as simply as possible. To make it easier, Let's imagine that Beat Saber is a two-dimensional game viewed from the top. The notes will travel in a straight line, and you will move or rotate your saber from left to right. If you rotate your saber more to the right, you would have to hit the note at a very specific time to get all 15 points for accuracy. This is also known as a timing-dependent swing. If you move your saber to the right, you can hit the note at any time and still get all 15 points. This is also referred as a timing independent swing. We can also visualize this using a demicircle. Shortly explained, if the saber is parallel to the direction of the note, the swing will be timing independent. If not, then it will be timing dependent. Keep in mind that timing dependence is an advanced mechanic. Applying this to your gameplay really becomes useful once you have mastered the fundamentals of Beat Saber. Having good saber control and being able to consistently full swing are necessary to make good use of this. This part will be a little more focused on the maths. Tiddy is a decimal value between 0 and 1. That value represents the percentage of the 15 points for accuracy that are dependent on the timing. For example, if you hit the note with a TD of 20%, we can multiply that value with the 15 accuracy points to know how much of them is dependent on the timing. If we do the math, 20% of 15 is 3 points. That means that if you take exactly the same swing and only change its timing, your accuracy could technically vary by a whole 3 points. When hitting a note, there will be a time frame where you have to hit the note to get the most amount of points. We can visualize this similar to how Osu visualized their unstable rate bar. The blue section represents a perfect timing, the green section is a good timing, and the orange section is a mediocre timing. Anything outside of that bar is a complete miss. The only difference is that each section of the bar will be dynamic according to the timing dependence of your swing. For a TD of 1, the blue section would be the smallest possible, which means you need an exceptional timing to hit the node for max points. For a TD of 0, the blue section would fill the entire bar, which means you would always get the maximum amount of points for your swing regardless of your timing. It is also important to note that the no jump speed will affect the timing bar. A higher no jump speed will make the bar smaller and require a better timing to not miss the note. If you want to know more about no jump speed, check out episode 2 of the series. A common misconception, however, is that with a TD of 0, you would always swing for 115. In reality, TD is a trade off between two skill sets your timing, and your aim. To hit a note for 115 with a TD of 0, you need an exceptional aim. In opposite, hitting a note for 115 with a TD of 1 doesn't require any aim at all as it will only change the timing at which you have to hit the note. Over the years, 
we have realized that playing with a lower TD is what felt more natural. It is significantly easier for someone to learn and practice how to aim correctly rather than having to learn the proper timing. Learning a low TD swing also makes it easier to spot your mistakes. If you hit a node for under 110 with a TD of 0, you know exactly what caused you to get the lower accuracy. Players will use mods to help them know what is their timing dependence. All the mods mentioned in this video will be linked in the description below. The easiest mod to use is the Timing Dependence Counter Plus extension. This will display your average timing dependence between each hand during a play. This is a good start, but it's not super precise. The same average can also be seen using the mod Beat Savior Data. My personal favorite tool is the one made by Rocker. He made a timing dependence hit score visualizer, which display your timing dependence on each node along with the score. It can teach you about how much you have to focus on the timing when hitting certain notes, and also teach you the proper swinging technique. However, this is a very different and vast subject, and I will probably make a separate video on it. And that's it for this new episode of Time to Improve. I hope that you guys enjoyed that video, and I hope that this will help some of you. Don't forget to click that subscribe button to see more of my content, and I'll see you on the next video of Time to Improve. Peace!